Super Mario music has this unmistakable sound. You hear it and you immediately know it's from a Mario game. So I asked myself, can I replicate that sound? This is what I came up with. What's up everybody? In this video I'm gonna show you how I made my own Super Mario World title theme. I'm gonna show you how the original works with some theory and we're gonna look at the arrangement and then we're gonna look at my piece in comparison. And at the end I'm gonna show you the piece that I made with annotations. The sort of mock-up Super Mario World title theme bargain bin version. I'm gonna be honest, this was really outside of my comfort zone as a composer, but I had a lot of fun and I learned a bunch and I hope you will too. Okay, let's dig right into it. So first thing I did was listen to the original and transcribe it. I considered transcribing it in classical notation, but since I mostly work with Ableton Live, I opted for a MIDI transcription instead. So I transcribed the whole piece in Ableton Live. When it was done, I felt that I understood what the piece was about. In the first part of the original, we have some distinctive elements that I then used for my own as well. For example, here's my melody. You'll find lots and lots of tritones in the original melody and harmony as soon as in the intro. The melodies in the theme usually go stepwise, but the few leaps are often fours. And the melodies often feature out of key notes, such as chromatic approach or neighboring tones. This is the accompaniment. And I also have this little chromatic counter melody, just like in the original. And together it sounds like this. The melody in the second part is quite festive and it ascends in steps and fourths. It's broken up between two instruments and each one is embellished with its own dedicated second melody. This splitting of a melody between two instruments or voices is called a hocket. The harmony in this piece is basically for the most part one, four, five, one. However, the last three chords are each approached by a diminished chord a half step below. The diatonic chords are tonicized. They become our new tonic for a brief moment and are preceded by a leading tone chord, the diminished chord on the seventh degree of the major scale, which makes these diminished chords secondary leading tone chords. For me, this harmonic progression is very essential for the piece, and that's why I wanted to have something similar for my own piece. I tried out different ideas for the second part. But I eventually settled on this. I wrote the final melody as a whole and then divided it between two instruments. And then I came up with this harmony. And then I embellished and arranged everything. And the third part, I granted myself a little more liberty. I still incorporated some elements of the original though. For example, I started on the four chord. This is what the original sounds like.
And here's my version. So, in my piece some things are different, but the overall gist of it is the same. We explore different harmonic territory, then go to the climax of the piece, only to come right back to the beginning. In the original, we go from the dominant chord D to the flat 7th chord F7 over E flat, back to D, and then to the 1 chord at the beginning of the piece, G major. I use a secondary dominant a half step above the 5 chord in my corresponding passage. A tritone substituted secondary dominant. Woo! Music theory! <laughs> that means we go from E to F7, back to E, and then to A. Koji Kondo used the same technique he used in the climax, in the intro by the way. He goes from the 5 to the flat 7, and back to 5. So I just did the same. Okay, let's listen to the whole thing. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.